Real estate moguls like Ben Mala are stressing big time in the current real estate climate. Ben is located a couple hours north of me in Clearwater, Florida. If you guys don't know this guy, he's extremely entertaining, uh, a really big savvy real estate investor. Check out his channel. I'm going to put a link below on the actual video that I'm going to be referencing throughout this video. Hey, what's up everybody? Steve with Steve Invest. We help people with passive income, personal finance, real estate, real estate investing. If you like that kind of content, go ahead and subscribe and I appreciate it. Ben and his family have a very well ran organization from what I gather. However, due to their debt position, they might not be in the best shape right now. Per his last video, the one that I'm gonna reference in the description below, his monthly nut on his house. I don't know if you've seen his house, but it's a monster directly on Clearwater Beach, but his monthly nut is about $30,000 a month. That's all fine and dandy, is so as long as your assets pay for your liabilities. Unfortunately, due to the current crisis, Ben's portfolio is compromised like many others, and not to mention the amount of people that they've had to lay off. Now be sure you guys stay to the very end of this video because I'm going to talk about uh, essentially what I've been doing to remain comfortable and stressless with my real estate portfolio at this time during this crisis. So let's go ahead and break down Ben's portfolio and if you like this kind of video, if you like this kind of content regarding real estate, go ahead and hit the like button. I appreciate the support. From what I've gathered, Ben has invested in hotels throughout the state of Florida. I think maybe even other states as well. I'm not 100% sure. But uh, some of the hotels that he brings you through through some of his videos, um, they're in prime spots like Fort Lauderdale, Clearwater, Clearwater Beach. The problem is in Florida, our season is uh, usually January, February, March, April. And in the current crisis that we currently have, um, everything is shut down. The state of Florida basically has shut down short-term rentals. And it's unfortunate in many areas and, and it's unfortunate for many real estate investors as well as the employees that work at these hotels because at the end of the day, nobody can stay there and they're completely vacant. And that's high season. That's where you're going to make the bulk of your revenue throughout the year. And that income is never going to be retrieved. Now, a lot of investors do have debt on hotels and without anybody coming and staying at the hotels, there's no revenue. But that monthly nut, that monthly expenditure, that monthly mortgage has to be paid. And unfortunately, I think there's going to be a lot of people in trouble over the next several months. Ben is also invested in apartment complexes. I think a lot of them are lower income. Right now, they stated that the collection rate is extremely low right now. So there's a lot of people not paying rent. And unfortunately, right now with government intrusion, you can't even evict anybody. And you can't even evict anybody even if you started the process prior to the crisis. And let's talk about larger commercial properties like strip centers. Ben has invested into multiple strip centers, which include large, large tenants like LA Fitness. And at the end of the day, that's one tenant that takes up tens of thousands of square feet. And some of these tenants are not paying. And the more savvy tenants are gonna hire and retain attorneys to actually utilize what's in a lot of contracts called force majeure. And basically it states that if any kind of unforeseen circumstances like uh, or a hurricane or something like the, the crisis that we're in right now, then they may not be obligated to the terms of that contract. And unfortunately, landlords like Ben are gonna have to lawyer up and they're gonna have to sue certain tenants in order to try to retrieve lost income. But unfortunately, the attorney bills are not very cheap either. So then you gotta outweigh the costs. So the main problem is with these larger investors is they have large debt positions. And when you have a large debt position, you, you're obligated no matter what to pay, pay your debt obligations and unfortunately if, if people stop paying rents then you don't have many options. Now Ben and his family have done an excellent job in growing their portfolio and they actually utilize an IRS tool called the 1031 exchange which is a great tool to grow your portfolio and essentially you're able to defer taxes when you sell an investment property for a gain. Unfortunately, when you do sell that investment property, you actually have to find a property that's of the same price or higher based on the sales price of that investment property that you sold. So essentially you're always, um, in my experience dealing with investors, you're always kind of just buying higher and higher. So if you sold a property for a couple million bucks, you're probably looking at something for three, four, five million dollars at that point in time. And you can see where that path brings you, which is usually a, a higher debt obligation. At the end of the day, I'm a small fry when it comes to real estate investors. However, I do not believe that bigger is necessarily better. 
And again, this is only my opinion and the lifestyle that I live. So let's kind of jump into what I've been doing. My goal at the end of the day has always to become financially free. Financial freedom is essential when your assets pay for your liabilities. And I really wanted to also build not just financial freedom, but a strong financial foundation. And one way that I've achieved that and worked toward was to ensure that I had a certain level of assets that are free and clear. Even several months ago, I actually sold one of my multifamily properties. The smart thing would have been to do is a 1031 exchange, go ahead and buy a higher property, get a higher debt position. I did have debt on that property as well. And the smart thing would have been to uh, defer taxes using a 1031 exchange. However, I decided to take the hit on the taxes, cash out of that property, and actually acquire a handful of other properties free and clear. And right now, to date, I don't have any debt position on, on anything at this point in time. And I know and I understand and I'm probably going to get comments below that debt is good if it's utilized correctly and it will magnify, magnify your gain. And I absolutely agree with that. And at the end of the day, there, there's going to be other opportunities that I probably will take on another debt position. But I can tell you, um, even learning from this black swan, I think that I will make sure that if I do take a debt position that it it's going to be a small, small position of the total value of the property. And at the end of the day, my financial foundation is more important than really the size of my portfolio. Like even right now, let's take it for example, if my tenants don't pay, I'm not stressed. You know, there are ongoing expenses that I have like taxes and insurance, but I don't have a, a debt position where I have that lender asking for their money every single month. At this point in time, I'm stressless. And I'm going to take the current climate that we're in right now, I'm gonna learn from it. And I believe in the future, there's gonna be a lot of deals that are gonna come our way, especially with other real estate investors that did over leverage and they're gonna to have to give them back to the banks. And it's gonna be unfortunate. We're probably gonna see more of that. And the people with uh, that are cash heavy are really gonna be able to get some good deals coming up. So here are my suggestions in terms of what I've done, what I'm doing, and what you maybe wanna consider. Again, I'm not providing you guys financial advice, this is just my opinion. The first thing is I think everybody needs to build a financial foundation. I think the number one thing is, you know, you have to live somewhere and I believe that everybody should work toward obviously home ownership, but not just leveraging that home, but figuring a way, a strategy to become mortgage free, debt free on where you live. When you do achieve that, I can tell you, it's one of the largest expenditures you're gonna have coming out of your income every single month. So I, I believe that everybody that uh, does go for a strategy of becoming mortgage free on their primary residence is gonna gain a lot more wealth in the future. The second thing is if you do take debt on a property, do not over leverage even right now, I probably would cont contemplate taking more than 60% debt position on, on any kind of real estate, uh, maybe 70%. The third thing is I highly recommend taking a percentage of that income and put it into some sort of reserve account, especially in times like this of this black swan. You want to have that extra funds in that bank account that could service the debt obligation for maybe three months, six months, maybe even a year just to give you that comfort level because things will bounce back things will return the tenants will pay and the people that do have reserve accounts they do have money set aside to to cover their debt positions are going to be fine through this and they're going to rebuild quicker uh, the fourth thing is consider getting loss of rents insurance basically that is a type of insurance that will cover you in case there's a loss of rents um, in any kind of catastrophic situation. I'm not sure if this would be covered under it, uh, this black swan that we have, but let's take for an example, you had a 12 unit apartment complex and you have debt on it um, and a fire broke out and burnt the entire place down and uh, you, at the end of the day, you'll have insurance to rebuild that 12 unit apartment complex. However, your mortgage on that property still has to get paid every single month, that doesn't stop. So basically, uh, a, a loss of rents insurance is gonna basically pay you that monthly nut to cover the, uh, the monthly nut for the mortgage and other expenditures. As always, I appreciate you guys watching. Let me know your thoughts below on Ben's strategy of growing his real estate portfolio compared to what I've been doing. And if you like this kind of content on real estate investing, passive income, financial freedom, go ahead and subscribe, like this video, and check out the playlist I got coming at, at you at the end of this. Thanks for the support.